Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. As I'm sure many of you are aware, I don't invest very often following Warren Buffett's key investing principles. I'm very, very disciplined in the types of investments that I make. And when I do make an investment, it is usually pretty significant. And with the stock markets in the US and Australia going up at pretty much a straight line over the past 18 months, uh, a lot of businesses have gone from being where they were very, very attractive or getting to become attractive during March or early 2020 to now they're back in that realm of 2019 valuation and even higher than 2019 valuation where things are getting very, very expensive. So it's extremely difficult for me in this environment to find something that I would consider a really great business, but also is available at an appropriate price. So for this particular investment, I found myself investing outside of the two markets that I typically invest in, moving over and investing on the London Stock Exchange in a company called ASOS. So in today's video, I'm going to give a breakdown of my main investment thesis for ASOS. I then want to zoom in on valuation and talk about my mindset and the process that I went through when deciding why it was a good idea to invest now and how much to invest. I then want to show you what ASOS looks like in my current portfolio. So not just what percentage ASOS is, but what does the rest of my portfolio look like now as I haven't shared an update in quite a few months now. And then just towards the end of the video, I want to talk about what's next for this investment, what I'm hoping to see out of ASOS in the short term and what I'm gonna do based on what happens to its stock price. So I hope you guys get some value out of today's video. And even if you're not interested in ASOS as an investment specifically, hopefully these videos are valuable in that you can see my analysis process, particularly when it comes to making the investment, going through the valuate, the final valuation process. And hopefully you can then apply that to other businesses, businesses and stocks that you are interested in. So with that said, leave a like on the video if you get some value out of it, I would very much appreciate it and it helps me out a ton. But with that said, let's jump into the video. So as I mentioned, the business that I invested into for the first time in about 19 months is ASOS PLC, which is a UK based online fashion retailer. It's a leading online fashion retailer in the UK and they also have a global presence that they are increasing every single year. And the way I actually came across this business was through some research into somebody called Nick Sleep who is a value investor with a focus on a very specific type of business that has a competitive advantage called Scaled Economies Shared. He was able to identify a few businesses that had this including uh, Costco in the early 2000s and also Amazon in the early 2000s and he doesn't invest very often and his most recent investment was in ASOS. So it piqued my curiosity to take a look at ASOS and see if I also thought that it had some of these scaled economies shared characteristics that great businesses like Costco and Amazon have. Now I'm not gonna get into scaled economies shared or Nick sleep in this video, but I do have a couple of videos covering those topics. So I'll leave them linked down in the description below if you want to check them out either now or after this video. So I wanna talk a little bit about my main thesis for this investment and this framework that I have applied to ASOS is the same framework that I apply to every investment I make and you can go out and think about the same sort of things when you're looking for businesses to invest in but at an extremely very top level we're trying to find really strong businesses that we're, we believe will be sustainable over the very long term, that will thrive over the long term and buy them at an appropriate price. And at a little bit more detailed level, that means that there's a number of characteristics and principles that the business needs to satisfy in order for it to be a business where confident will do well over time. In ASOS's case, they are one of the businesses leading a massive change in the fashion retail industry from physical real estate to online real estate. The business also adopts a scaled economy shared competitive advantage, which I've spoken about in previous videos. I'll leave some linked down in the description below, but it's essentially the characteristic where as the business scales and achieves the benefits of lower cost per unit production, they pass that back on on to the customers in, form, in the form of lower prices, essentially squashing out competition as they scale. The management team has done an extremely good job at investing effectively within the business. They drive an extremely strong culture for their employees at the business and their values are significantly aligned with the shareholders through their compensation package and their personal share ownership. The company is also in reasonable financial health. It's not the best. I would like to see them cut down some of their liabilities or increase their cash position to protect their balance sheet a little bit more. Uh, but that's certainly, I think, the, the worst part of the business and their financial health is reasonable. It's not 
absolutely out of control. And by the way, if you are interested in seeing the full report on ASOS, I have done a full analysis on the company and that's available exclusively to the students and members of Learn by Example, which is currently open for enrollment. So check out the link in the description below uh, if you're interested in checking that out. But then I, in this video, I just wanted to take a deeper dive into valuation, right? Because it's not enough, of course, to invest in businesses that are great. Uh, they need to be at an appropriate price. And I wanna talk about what that looks like for ASOS and my investment. My valuation process is relatively simple. When it comes to ASOS, I'm making projections about what I think the industry revenue will look like in different regions. So um, there's data that ASOS provides and other online fashion retailers provide and actually other physical retailers as well. And through combining those numbers and finding an average of what industry growth is likely to be in the future and then being even more conservative than those projections, I can come up with a reasonable estimation of how much revenue will be available for ASOS or for the whole industry uh, to capture in say 10 years time. I can then make some projections about how ASOS's market share in the industry may change over time, whether it will stay flat, whether it will decline or grow and grow at what rate in different regions. And then I make an estimation of what profit margins may look like for the business. And with all of these different projections, I'm coming up with a range because there's no way to specifically calculate what their margin's going to be in 10 years. You need to just come up with a reasonable range in which you think it's extremely likely that their margins will sit or that the industry revenue growth will be uh, or what their market share might be. And as I've shown in a previous video, with a 0% margin of safety targeting a 15% return, uh, my buy range is somewhere between $18 per share and $33 per share after taking into account the cash that the business has on its balance sheet. And that implies that if I'm looking for a 50% margin of safety to that valuation, which is what I always look for when I'm building out a complete position, my buy range would be somewhere between $9 and $17 per share, even though the stock right now is at about $28 per share. So where the stock is right now, I'm not building out a complete position. And when I say complete position, I essentially mean uh, making a position 10 to 15% of my portfolio. That's pretty much where I feel comfortable now putting um, you know, that size of money into an individual business, but I'm only willing to do that if its stock price gets extremely cheap, uh, meaning I can target a 15% return plus add a significant margin of safety. So if the stock is too expensive to build out a complete position, if I can't get a 50% margin of safety, in fact, it's just in my buy range with no margin of safety. So I'm getting maybe a very, very small single digit margin of safety on my projections or something like that. Uh, then why am I willing to invest in it now? And why have I invested some money into the stock? And the reason why I'm willing to invest some money into this stock is because occasionally when you have this approach and when you're in a market like we are now where a lot of things are expensive and it's very difficult to find really, really good investment opportunities, uh, my cash position in my portfolio builds up, right? Every single month, whenever I have income coming in from my business, I set a percentage aside of my income and put that into my investment portfolio. And what that means is that while I'm not investing and haven't been adding to the portfolio, over the past 19 months, uh, there has been a cash buildup in the portfolio. And there's a limit to how much I am happy to have in cash. So when that gets too high, I will look for the next best available opportunity to invest. And even though ASOS doesn't offer, say a 20 to 22% per year return, which is typically what I'm looking for, that's a 15% return plus a 50% margin of safety, it is offering a 15% return with no margin of safety. And that is still a really good return over time. You could maybe say that that's a 10% return with a 50% margin of safety or something in that ballpark. And out of all of the businesses that I understand and have studied, that is the best opportunity that I can see right now. So what that means is I'm not willing to put 10 to 15% of my portfolio in. I need that margin of safety for that, but I am willing to dip my toes and invest just a little bit. So how does ASOS look in my current portfolio and how does my overall portfolio look? So you can kind of see where this investment fits in and now you'll understand a little bit more about why I'm investing now even though there isn't a 50% margin of safety available. In order to track my portfolio and then also share this pie chart that I'm about to show you for my portfolio, uh, I use a software called ShareSite. I've been using it since I started investing almost five years ago. And it is a really fantastic service that can be used wherever you are around the world in order to build your portfolio and track 
all of your investment returns. So I'd highly recommend you go check out ShareSight if you don't have a portfolio tracking software. If you're just tracking your returns in your broker, I guarantee you, you are being misled because there is very little chance that they are including your dividends, your reinvested dividends, the cost of your investments, currency gains, and a bunch of other things that you need to consider. You can try ShareSight for free by heading over to sharesite.com forward slash Hamish Hodder. You can also use the link down in the description below. They have a free plan, try it for as long as you want and you can track up to 10 holdings. Uh, or if you want to pay for a premium plan and uh, have more features, then you, if you use that link, you can get four months off a yearly subscription. So it's a really good deal. If you haven't done that already, I recommend you go and check that out. So as you can see, here's my portfolio and it looks very, very similar to how it's looked for a really long time. I really don't make any changes to this portfolio for the most part. There's a significant amount of cash there. A lot of that is because uh, cash has been building up, as I mentioned, but a significant portion of that is also going towards an investment property. So that's why I've kind of let that run higher than I probably would in most cases. I have my 15% of my portfolio in index funds as always to act as a foundation of the portfolio. Then I have my significant investments in Thor Industries, Corporate Travel Management, Texas Roadhouse, a smaller investment in Facebook, some foreign currencies, that's US dollars at the moment. And then you can see my ASOS investment there at 2.7% of the portfolio. And my really simple portfolio really doesn't change very often. I've basically made about one significant investment per year since I started about four and a half years ago. And the portfolio has generated a per year compounded return over that time of 34% per year when excluding cash. So you could bring that down maybe 30% um, or so to account for the fact that I've always had some cash in the portfolio. But it's a portfolio that's done extremely well. And it's one that is uh, built very differently to how most people go about it. Most people will tell you to have way more businesses in your portfolio to trade them more frequently. Uh, I have the approach of buying businesses like you are an owner, buying them like your Warren Buffett, <laughs> buying a few businesses that you deeply understand understand and that you've taken your time to know that they're a really great business that will thrive over the long term and that you're buying them at an appropriate price. Quick reminder that Learn By Example is open for enrollment. If you want to learn more about that and join our private community, uh, enrollment is open until the end of October. So there's links to all the information you need about that down in the description below if you're interested. But in terms of where this ASOS investment is going, do I plan on leaving it as a really small investment? Well, that really just depends on what Mr. Market offers me over the next year or so, or, or really in, over the next few years. Um, if the stock continues to fall and it does get into my buy range with that margin of safety, then of course I will be happy to invest a significant amount more money into the portfolio or into that position. And that position may become a 10 to 15% um, piece of my overall portfolio. But if the stock just continues to go up from here, if it just bottoms out at wherever I bought it and it goes up, uh, I won't be adding more um, because I will only add more if the valuation gets more attractive. Um, I'm only willing to dip my toes in a little bit at this valuation. It's kind of right on the edge of where I'd be happy, but I would love to see this stock come down another 50%. And you might wonder, well, if you'd love to see it come down 50%, then why not just wait for that to happen? And the truth is, we don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know if ASOS is going to get more attractive. I know that right now it's a pretty good deal, but it'll be an even better deal if, uh, I don't know if it'll happen, but if it gets a lot cheaper, so I'll actually be happy if that happens. So um, that's my latest investment that I've made in the portfolio. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Leave a like on the video if you got some value out of it. And of course, hit subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the content that I post in the future. But with that said, hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.